Well, thank you all for coming to today's admin meeting. My apologies for not sending out the reminder. Uh, we were out of the office last week here at Pale, so it completely slipped my mind that it was this week. I thought it was next week that we had our meeting. So thank you all for coming. Um, at last month's meeting, we talked about circulation policies and uh, it was pitched uh, by one of the attendees that we talk about hold policies this week. So that was kind of my plan, unless folks wanted to chat about something else more pressing. I know the hatch thing is kind of a, a, a issue at the moment, but it seems manageable. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, for pails, I'll just give a little info for holds policy for us. Um, they're overwhelming. Uh, we have, uh, you know, throughout the history of the organization, we have quite a different, a uh, few different staff members on. So uh, kind of their construction and like formatting has uh, varied slightly. So, um, and then with each and new immigration, it seems like depending on the setup of that group, will kind of dictate how their pol hold policies are built. Um, I have it for as a project for next year to go through and kind of streamline a lot of those policies, set things at like a system level rather than every single member library of a system have their own. Um, but since we don't do uh, resource sharing across the consortia, we kind of have system set policies. And then within that system, sometimes a library and individual libraries have their own policies as well. So that makes things a little uh, tricky to decode when we're looking at uh, why things are behaving the way they are. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we stand. Um, there is one bug that I am gonna perpetually champion. <laughs> and that's the max holds bug uh, in, in so much as that um, having the policies read similar to your circulation policies where you have circulation limit sets and you can have you know five things on the showing location and this circ bond, kind of having a similar structure with the holds policies where you can, if you set like a holds policy for the adult uh, permission group at a specific library, being able to request things consortially or system-wide, and then having like the limit be five books, that it's five books and five books only and not five holds total, <laughs> which is kind of what we're experiencing. So let me find that. Um, I never, can never remember the full name of it. I want to say it's like mass holds needs work. It's not very, yeah, max holds enhancements, the title. I'll just put that in the chat. So if you uh, have similar situations, uh, We'd appreciate any comments or thoughts on how you think it could work. Um, we definitely are interested in, in learning more about how others are using uh, this element of the holds policy, if they're using it at all. Sorry, I was just looking at ours. Um, for Max Hold specifically, um, and I'm wondering if it is because of this bug, because I feel like it's come up of can we limit, um, you know, like Chromebook checkouts or something like that. So I know it's definitely something our libraries are interested in. Um, but yeah, as of now, um, I guess just upon looking at it, they seem pretty simple. Um, but yeah, we only use max holds. Um, so for like all patrons, pretty much it's 50. And then we just have two other patron groups that have a limited number. Um, so yeah, ours don't change that much on max holds. And in general, um, we don't have, so we have 67 hold policies. I'm assuming that's less than 
others since we do consortium. So we have, yeah, very like blanketed policies um, and they really only vary minorly for, like I said, patron groups. And then there's some um, circulation modifiers that we limit for, you know, branch or system. But That sounds like the dream. That's why I was like, I am so, um, I haven't looked at whole policies much. I've just only been, you know, in the depths of circulation policies. Um, so yeah, when I came to look at it, I was like, oh, this part for us at least isn't as scary as circulation policies. <laughs> but again, I really haven't ever created one or, you know, so. Mm -hmm. We're probably what, like smaller than a 10th of the size of pines, I want to say, um, and, and pales, but So we should have a tenth of the number of old policies, but that's not true for us. <laughs> um, we have 58 old policies and we do a lot of, I think it sounds like the same kind of thing as Pines, um, where oh, there are like a lot of overarching like consortium wide um, old policies. And then we do have like a couple here and there where we have instances of, oh, this library wants this very specific collection to be able to be placed on hold for pickup at their library, but not to be sent to other libraries like um, like e-readers is, is an example or like hotspots. Um, and so that's kind of where the bulk of the additional old policies that we have are coming from. Um, I, for that bug that you pointed out, Elizabeth, I don't know if we've encountered that um, a lot. I assume that we have because I, I guess I'm watching that bug um, and I, it says that I it affects me, but I'd have to go back to see um, when like when we've encountered that specifically because I like off the top of my head, I'm not sure um, when, when we have. Yeah, like I said, it's probably kind of unique to us because of our Our, the way we have um, folks organized. Um, and like we have, you know, some resource sharing projects. So we have like system to systems, but we don't have like consortia wide. So, um, so like a system might have its own internal policies and then it'll have another set of resource um, to hold policies for the items that it lends to like their neighboring or other partners. So like you have two sets sometimes, if not more, like you'll have a system set and then you'll have an individual library set. Like some systems want, you know, they, they didn't agree. So like one library in the system may say, okay, well, I want a hold limit of like 25 books and it's like 25 things across the board. And then some libraries are like, well, we want 10 DVDs and 25 books. So then they have a whole other set of policies unto themselves. So at the moment, we have over 3,000 policies, which is um, sometimes really tricky to <laughs> troubleshoot why something is traveling when it shouldn't or is, shouldn't be traveling <laughs> when it is. So um, our goal this, this next year is to kind of go through and kind of nudge folks along to maybe getting more streamlined system-wide policies so that it's, you know, at least at that level rather than granular within the system, especially if they're in a larger, uh, like, system-to-system -system resource sharing project. Those limits don't, in my mind, don't really, you're not kind of, you're, you have more things to pull from, so why limit the number of holds? Like, okay, maybe don't let them check out 500 books, but why not let them have 50 holds total across the board rather than five of this, five of that, 10 of this, 10 of that. Oh. Um, I think we're just in kind of a unique situation. Anything else related to holds that folks want to chat about? I feel like we had a lot with CERC policies, but holds, I feel like, might not be as. Yeah, we don't actually have that many circumstances where we set hold policies. If things are non-holdable, people set that in the item or the copy location. Mm -hmm. So the 
the main reasons we need hold policies are like for academics, if stuff is holdable for some patron types, but not others, we need that. And, and we do have a lot that prevent, I mean, our, our consortium stuff travels freely, but we do have a lot of that prevent things from traveling like library things and hot spots as Dan mentioned. Yeah. But we really don't have that many and we don't generally limit mm -hmm. circs or holds. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I feared. Yeah. I, I thought we might be in the, you know, the odd man out on this one, but that's fine. That's we were aspiring to that, you know, the smaller number of holds policies, smaller, okay. no limits or larger limits. Yeah. One of, one of my pet peeves is that you can't configure whole policies based on some of the same criteria you can configure CERC policies. Yes. So yep. there's a bug that's, or a couple of bugs for that, <laughs> probably. Oh. Yeah. Shelving location has bit us in the, bit us a few times where we yeah. really want it to be like that granular. Um, I know we're pursuing development for library groups so that we'd be able to set a policy for a whole library group rather than just a one individual system. So that would help clear up some of our, you know, system to system policies. So like if we have five systems working together, we don't have to have, you know, a set for each system to each system. So like, what is it, 25 sets? <laughs> so, um, it would just be like this library group gets to do this. So um, we're excited for that one, but it's a little ways down the road still. Yeah, Evergreen Indiana has a really complex system of uh, how it does its both its circ and hold policies. We basically script it. And so based on that, that script, then we have like specific criteria and then it just inserts values and completely recreates both the circ matrix match point and the hold matrix match point. Oh, how does, can you speak a little bit more on that? I don't oh, think I- um, it's, <laughs> I can look at the scripts and we, oh, I've okay. inher I inherited the scripts. So they're pretty, um, but basically we have like, uh, it's, so we have this, um, it's in our local Git. And so we run these, these specific scripts for our CERC policies, whenever we add uh, find free, or if there's like a specific, say only juveniles are find free or something like that, we have different criteria based on that, looking at um, that data. And then it literally just creates inserts that it adds inserts to a file and then runs that file afterward. Okay. And then it updates the policies. Yep. We just clear out that both of those tables and we have one that we call CERC gen and the other one's called hold gen. And mm -hmm. so then when we update that and then we just run the script and then it clears out everything and rebuilds it. Oh, how does, how does that impact? Like, we don't do it when we're running. We basically do it late at night, like after okay. the libraries are closed and that kind of thing, just in case. Yeah. I was like, but it runs pretty fast. Like, <laughs> sounds like it could be potentially amazing and or horrible at the same time yes. if something glitches. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Well, we, we do it in, in a single transaction when we do it. So that's kind of the, an important part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's really it's really complex and you just look through, basically have different little bits as it goes. And so when you're looking at the, like the hold policy, we have one that says uh, limit, limited user accounts with limited holds. And then it goes through looking at the system, the system list. And then it says if the, if a, like a certain permission is a certain way, and then for all the CERC mods within that, with uh, like these specific CERC mods, add specific inserts, and then it goes just through a whole bunch of different stuff. Hmm. That's cool. And how often do you think you run that? We run that whenever we have libraries make big changes. Mm -hmm. So for example, if they're going find free, um, or if they are, um, if they're changing how that how they they want to do certain finds, or they have certain certain circ mods change, maybe we add a circ mod into the into this into the full consortium that has that needs uh, a, to be added in somewhere to reflect those changes. Um, we don't really update it too often. Okay, luckily. now that's good. <laughs> 
Interesting. But it does have to be, so what it, it creates those policies based on like, for example, if we have migrations, then every migration, we need to make sure that's run uh, before uh, the before things are migrated in mm -hmm. as a part of that. As your process. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Hmm. Yeah, we have currently 4,000 uh, 128 hold policies. <laughs> okay. I'm so glad someone else has more than we do. <laughs> Not that it's a contest, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's Just because really we cool. have so many libraries. We have, uh, uh, we have like, I think it's around 131 or more uh, right now. That's awesome. Cool. Um, I'm curious if anyone knows, sorry. Um, I was looking at the, um setting for range is from owning library and we don't use that in any of ours but so is the default from for the range from the pickup library or the patron home library i don't know or i don't know let me see if there's other like settings like that ours are you we don't i don't tend to use that one let me i want to just check my notes i have But I have seen it in use when we have migrating libraries come in. And I think um, like things like age protection, I think it looks just at the pickup library instead of the patron home library to decide whether it's allowed. So. I'm wondering if it is the default is normally just pick up library, but I don't know. It it also might depend on your weights. Oh, right. How could I forget about the weights? Because <laughs> like certain, you can have like certain elements hold a priority over one thing or the other. That's um, right. And I always forget to look at those. But let me see. Yeah, I forget that for these and CERC policies, there's like three different interfaces you have mm -hmm. to touch. <laughs> so we don't that. have, like, I think once the weights are set, you kind of, we don't oh, really yeah. touch them. Mm -hmm. um, let me just, yeah, match point weights. So we have, there, we have one that's like item, item owner first, user before requester, or then we have one that's all equal. Our default prioritizes owning library and then user home library and equal to pickup library. So I can share my screen actually, if that makes more sense. So like our default owning is the, the highest priority and then equal to um, that, and the next level would be um, user home or pick and or pick up. Okay. So um, you were talking about um, owning the, um, oh man, total blank. <laughs> Uh, just the the transit range from owning yeah from owning um, library i was Do just looking at our weights too and our user home library pickup library and owning library is all the same weight <laughs> so that's now confused me more yeah um yeah we don't use uh oh we do use it range is from owning library um that must yeah that's an older library so that was not one that we set is there like a clear definition in the uh, documentation on how that? Um, I don't know. Finding some mentions of it in, um, I think in some of the code, but I don't know like what was the most recent here. Um, let me see, actually, I have it open in VS Code. So let me see if I can 
I have no idea how to actually find out how to share this. There should be, Does is someone there, who knows this, how to do this better? <laughs> is, I could try sharing my screen, maybe. yeah, Would do you that want work? to, Okay. hold on, there Let me, we go. let me try that. Um, I was going to see if I could like find a link to a Git or something, but this is probably a lot easier. Um, so I think that this is the most recent one that I found here. And so um, this is what that actually is, um, is this distances from owner here. And so I think that what this is basically saying is that um, if that is selected, then you do the, do the test based on the owning library. And if not, then you do it based on the items circ library. So rather than the like call number records owning library, the actual items circ library, um, if that isn't selected. Um, we Yeah, don't that use was my this recollection one. of how it worked. But yeah, I do see that in. Um, so I, I think what Stan's showing is confirmation that it's owning library. And if that's not, I mean, I'm sorry, circ library, unless you use that option, then it's from owning library. Yeah, because if you think about it, when you look at your holds pull list, if you have something, um, say you have libraries that have, um, it the, the pulls list pulls from the owning library or the cir circling library rather than the owning library. Yeah. Because we have a few libraries that the system owns everything and then the circ library dictates whose pull list it comes from. And I assume that the the setting, the ranges from owning library setting is related to the transit range setting in the hold policies. That makes sense. I think. I'll stop sharing my screen now. Is there a, like official page for like, cause there is a page like how to build CERC policies. Is there one for in the documentation for holds? I was just going to say, I can't find it if there Okay. is. Okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one because Um, I was looking for it the other day and I was like, why? yeah. And I was looking for a bug too, if there was one for documentation, um, but I did come across the shelving location bug unless anyone um, hadn't already added heat to it. Thank you. Sure. But yeah, I thought I saw something about, or maybe that was circulation policy documentation. Yeah, there's a whole one like bar in the borrowing items, who, what, for how long. And that kind of goes through like best practices and like what all of the uh, elements kind of def definition of what each one does. But I'm not seeing one for whole policies. Yeah, we could, if you'd like, we could write one. Yeah, let's do it. Exciting. Because <laughs> I, I think I had another question about the age one elements of the holds policy. Because um, like there's a item age less than, and then there's also... Um, Where did it go? There's like item hold, yeah, copy age hold protection rule. And in my mind, those are almost the same thing. And I think I had reached out to Equinox about it to see like, does one of these values actually not do anything? Cause there are a couple of those where like the fields are still there but they don't actually do anything. Um, but they told me that they both work still um, if you want them to. Hmm. So, like, if there's not a rule, you can just kind of shovel in there. So does that mean you can, I, I've often wondered why that was there. Does that mean that you can make 
a rule based on the value of that HO protection in the item? I have I have not tried that. The only ones that I have tried is item age. And then it's like, okay. they're usually for like our resource sharing groups who like, so they're not like, because we have a couple copy age hold protection rules that are kind of like, there's one that's where it stays at the owning library. And then we have ones that go to like siblings and, and parents, but not to the consortium. Like we have like a couple of them. So um, for our resource sharing, we just say three, three months across the board, nothing moves outside. So I've only used the item age. I've never used the copy age hold protection one. And so. so ours for the three month is in the copy age hold protection rule instead of item age. So maybe, yeah, they just do the same thing. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Yeah, you almost... No, never mind. <laughs> so we have age-based hold protection in our consortium. Um, we don't have anything set in either of these fields. Yeah, we don't either in the hold policies. You don't okay. have to. Okay. You can use it either yeah. in the item or mm -hmm. sometimes if it's like a universal rule across the board, like they're usually used only in the res these resource sharing agreements where it's like everything is um, that set up, so. Okay, but if you want to get more granular and you have like these specific, okay, okay. That's right, when that you do it in item for them. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a question for folks about whole policies. Um, this might just be a product of maybe a weird way that we have our setup, I don't know, but we have long had a setup where patrons can place, let's say like 20 active holds, but then have a, an additional number of um, frozen holds that is above that like limit of 20. And I don't know if, it was always this way, but after we kind of put things back together um, after COVID, um, and because we had like done a lot of weird things with hold policies during COVID, after we put them back together, we found that patrons were able to um, use some kind of loophole where even though we say that they can have 20 active holds and then up to like the 50 suspended holds, we found cases where patrons have 200 suspended holds or something. Um, does anyone else do anything weird like that um, with like a different number of active versus suspended holds and has encountered that? No, is it just us? I have not seen that. We do have some libraries that include frozen in their max hold limit and some that do not. So, but I have not seen an instance where the numbers differ. Okay. It's kind of a cool idea, but then you run into instances where we have one library that is concerned about one of, they were concerned about one of their holds where they had a patron who had, because they don't limit holds. They had a patron who had over 8,000 frozen holds and 5,000 active holds. Wow. Yeah. So, and it was one person, like the next highest person had maybe a hundred of each. <laughs> so like not... Like 100, 200 holds seems like a lot of holds to me. But like if you're an elementary school teacher, yeah, that seems like a normal amount because if you're planning out your your year, but like thousands, can't imagine thousands. That's a lot. How yeah, this are seems you like the... setting? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I think my mic. Um, how are you setting the limit for frozen holds? Or I may just be missing the field. We use the um, the, the max. Max includes frozen. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. 
I guess we do too. So then does that mean you have two sets? So like if you have, you know, adult patrons, max holds 10, and then adult patrons, max holds 20, includes frozen. Is that how you do it? Okay. That's exactly what we had, yeah. Oh, okay. I see. I guess, yeah, we just have it. We have max includes frozen across the board. That's why I was like confused. Okay. So I also, I don't know if it had been happening beforehand too. And um, cause I started right before COVID started um, at, at this position. So it's possible that there, like people were already exploiting that loophole, but um, we hadn't received any complaints about it as far as I know. And then um, we did receive complaints about it uh, when someone like activated like a hundred holds at once or something. And one of the, one of our libraries got a whole bunch at once, although it's not the same as 5,000 at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they're not all fillable holds either. They're like really, It could be like, they could be hopeless in some instances. Um, I'm just curious, like how, how would you even, was, has anybody able to replicate how they're doing this? Like, are they hitting one hold policy and then freezing? So that it. I'm not sure. My suspicion is probably that they're like doing something where they're, I don't even know if the 50 isn't, taking or whatever and they're able to place a lot of frozen holds and then activate them all at once um but i haven't been able to replicate how people are able to to get around that hmm. well are those are those only checked those policies only checked when a hold is placed so that's if what they, i'm wondering yeah so like if they if they place a bunch of holds within the limits and then they they like freeze some holds and that allows them to place more holds and then they do that several times and then they unfreeze all their holds i don't think there's anything that would stop them from doing that yeah because i think it only checks that one time like during the placement yeah We don't generally use hold limits, so it's not something that we run into. But well, we do have some patrons with lots and lots of suspended holds. <laughs> 5,000? <laughs> um, I don't know. I know we had, like, I know there's a lot of suspended holds in our system. And yeah. It's really frustrating when, like, the patron suddenly goes away. Mm-hmm. I haven't been active in, in quite some time, but they've got all these suspended holds. Yes. <laughs> hmm. That is something to th consider for like those that use it. Like when you, when the patron gets deactivated, are you going in and like editing all their holds? I wonder if there's a script for that, like automatically cancel all holds when a patron is deactivated or de you know deactivated cancel after three months of deactivation or something like that like that would be yeah because like the, the suspended holds they lose their expiration date i think when they get suspended mm -hmm. yeah they don't they sit there for perpetuity <laughs> so is there any part of the um, patron purge process that gets rid of holds when a patron is purged? I don't know off the top of my head. I think so. Um, I think when a patron is actually purged, all that, like their circs get anonymized and I would think their holds would get canceled, but I could just be making that up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, and I have no idea how to figure that out either. 
Well, I'm going to put it in the notes and I'll reach out to Equinox and ask them if you don't. Um, and then if, you, if I find anything, I'll share it with the group. And yeah, I guess back to when the policy is actually checked, I'm assuming, you know, if you're at your max holds number, if you uncancel holds, I'm assuming you would not get an alert or anything, right? Probably. Okay. I would assume you wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you've reached the max and it says like you, you know, it says you can't place any more holds or whatever, if you freeze some, it can then, or cancel some, you can, depending on how you have the freeze thing set up, that will allow you to add more. I feel like if a patron's going through that much effort to circumvent limits, then they might as well just have it, right? Yeah, good for them. <laughs> right, it's like, like good job. Effort. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. Like if you've if you've thought about this enough to game the system, bravo, congratulations, you've now got an extra whatever. Like you're a power user, you, that's a perk. <laughs> But yeah, but if everyone's doing it, then that's a different thing entirely. But yeah. Um, I'm just curious, Michelle, since you, you said that you don't have hold limits and also you, you have full resource sharing, do you find that like the amount of items shared between libraries is like manageable? Do you ever encounter any problems with like a, too much volume of items being sent between libraries? Um, not that we've really heard about in a while. We don't, we don't manage delivery. That's a, like a, it's the we statewide delivery, but maybe they hear a lot more than we do. But um, what was I going to say? Uh, we have, we have the holds, holds always go home or holds, we every pretty much everything is age hold protected. So, and if there's a hold at the, um, the check-in library that, that gets filled first, unless it has to go home for age hold protection. So, and we keep things, we try and minimize transits. I mean, that's what Evergreen likes to do. So, <laughs> so I don't think we have a huge, volume and our you know our libraries own a lot of stuff and can fill from within two so i don't think we've had that issue at least not not recently we've been um working with equinox to kind of limit kind of like teach evergreen when to pick specific copies of things like we want it to pick the only if the pickup library has it we want it to pick there and then we want it to go to the system and then we want it to go to resource sharing and then like further resource like so we have like the the gps coordinates in there so we're trying to teach it like how far like actually how far things are like we've adjusted the um hold priority weights Proximity adjustments, sorry, I always get the names wrong. <laughs> that has been <laughs> configured so like it knows in addition to like the geo component. And then we've also given them like the delivery van schedule. So like it knows like on Tuesdays it goes in this order. And so like when you're picking, it should pick, you know, if it's the pickup library is at the bottom of the, the, the delivery route, you can pick from any of these. So we've kind of been using that and we've had some success with in terms of minimizing transits in that way, but it's not like a hundred percent foolproof. Like it's not always, you know, spot on, like, but usually it's after stuff has happened that we hear about it. So it's really hard to be like, okay, well, let's get a quick snapshot exactly of everything and how it was on that day when the patron put the request in. Um, so that's been hard to kind of manage that expectation like that it's also like if your resource sharing partner across the state checks it in, Evergreen's going to say, oh, well, 
you're closed today, so I'm going to pick this, even though you're open tomorrow, and we have to mail it. <laughs> Haven't figured that component out, <laughs> um, but yeah, otherwise, I think it's been going pretty well. I was just curious if other consortia have that have that problem where they're like, it's picking copies you don't ex the staff aren't expecting it to pick. Yeah, we we did have that for libraries that um like were closed for two days for a weekend or a Monday holiday. Um and we had, I think, like a 24-hour read. No, I forget exactly what our retargeting interval was. And we didn't have stalling. And we extended our retargeting interval. Now I think it's 72 hours, and we do have stalling. This all happened with, with COVID. And I think we've definitely had less of those complaints since then. Um, but it might mean that stuff doesn't get filled as fast but we haven't gone back <laughs> yeah that's what i was kind of yeah. like trying to balance like do we want the tar the holds to fill fast and if or do we want them to fill or uber efficiently mm. like, which is more important to me faster is better but yeah i know we did um we did have libraries complain that a whole, like a hold in another library, got targeted when our copy is 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 coming home, any like, or already came home, and yet it's coming from another library. And since we increased our targeting interval, we have not had reports of that. Yeah, we did something similar. I think we just changed ours from 24 to 48. Um, and we were worried about that too, if there's going to be complaints about um, filling holds um, as fast. But yeah, we haven't heard anything. So I think it helps. Um, and yeah, we don't use proximity adjustments right now, but it's definitely something we're thinking about. So that's interesting that you're working with Equinox on that. Because um, yeah, our um, courier budget just keeps you know, going up and up. So we're trying to figure out ways to make it more yeah. efficient. But yeah, all of that is just overwhelming. Yeah, it was like the hub to hub method, I think Galen called it. I feel like maybe it was Indiana that has it. Jeremy, do you? We, we do have a, with a, so with our whole proximity adjustments, uh, we actually base it on specific um, hubs or locations of hubs uh, in that case, so we have essentially we have um, three hubs in our north sector, and then one in our central, and then two in our south, and we divide we split it by those sectors, and then we um, then we look at so if some we have scripts that that rebuild it whenever we uh, add in a new library, and then we will um, or if there's uh, changes that happen, sometimes the courier will have specific changes that require us to rebuild it as well. And so we will actually get the data from, because um, we also um, actually originally built our uh, in-house uh, shipping label system that we have for that. And so I have this, I have all that data that I can just pull all that zone data and then build that, uh, build it, uh, build a new proximity adjustment for Evergreen based on. So, for example, if it's uh, if the library is in the north zone, the north zone then anything in the central will be plus two and then anything in the the south will be plus four and kind of vice versa between and so and then that that's set specifically for every library does that make sense i think so Okay. I feel like I need a flow chart <laughs> and a map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's exactly so because we have a, we have like a big we have lots of flow for loops, and so it's like, oh, so if this library is in you know north zone, central is plus two, southern is plus uh, plus four. But if the library is in central, then north is plus two, and um, then south is plus two. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if only how many north um, sorting yeah. facilities do you guys have? You know. 
the career? Oh, for for our career? Yeah, I'm just out of curiosity. Uh, we it was one for for each hub, so it's going to be uh, a total of six, I believe. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, our problem, I think right now, I think we used to have two, but now we just have one. And so kind of like everything has to go there first and then back out. So that's another issue I think we're having. Because um, even, I guess, yeah, even if we did proximity adjustments, I don't know how much it would help if it all has to go to like the central location first. But no, that's really good to know. I mean, to think about. Yeah, I do know that we are, some of our, uh, our delivery service still has some issues like certain hubs they're not um because we had a situation where we changed uh our courier uh the actual um the company that provides the service and so that uh we did it last year and then we had to change back because when we changed to just could not provide the service uh within a timely fashion they just couldn't ramp up fast enough um and that's still um so and we were a big portion of the original couriers business as well so they wound up getting rid of a bunch of people and then they they had to also hire more people back again and so we have certain hubs that are doing much better than other hubs we have like one problem child hub right now where a lot of our libraries are just not getting the materials or not getting deliveries uh, but the rest are getting better Michelle, um, for stalling, are you using the hard and soft stalling or the pickup library hard and soft, soft stalling? Um, that is a good question. Because uh, the two, to be honest, are very confusing to me. And yes. I don't, know. <laughs> I, I don't know which one to test first. I think... I think it's soft stalling and I forget that that's the library settings, right? Yeah. Let me look. I think we actually have just set it for the consortium. Okay. Of course I should look before I look. <laughs> um, let's see. Hard, soft. Right now, I'm not even seeing them set. I will have to remember how we set it because I'm not seeing the settings right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Because it's, um, it's just a little confusing. Like, so soft stalling is the amount of time holds will not be opportunistically captured at a non-pickup branch. And then there's nothing explained for hard, hard stalling. So I was kind of like, I don't. Yeah, I remember reading all the options and they all made sense at the time. But <laughs> was yeah. a while. We're actually actively testing this right now. I have it on our agenda for our advisory committee for next week. Um, oh. which is uh, exciting, but also uh, a little nerve wracking because we have like 18 other things that we're talking about. Um, what we've been testing is the two pickup library stalling intervals. So I, I tried testing them out. So we like just as pickup library hard stalling interval and pickup library soft stalling interval, both for two days. Um, and that in testing has worked pretty well um the what we did find is one bug that still caused um that basically like after a day after our targeter ran again after 24 hours it still ended up targeting another item so i'm gonna bring this to the advisory committee with also the recommendation to increase the targeter interval um as well okay. We have a few people who want to try stalling, but are interested in stalling, but they don't like we can't, you can't really test stuff like this on the test server. Like it's, there's just too many variables, especially with a larger system. You can't like place the volume of holds to like thoroughly test it. So um, if you wouldn't mind reporting back, Dan, that would yeah, be definitely. greatly appreciated. I'd definitely be interested in hearing about it myself.
Sure, sure. Um, and the, I mean, the reason that we're looking at that is, I think, kind of the, the two big reasons that people have already talked about. Um, first, that sometimes like something will be checked in across the system when a library has only had an item on their pull list for like five minutes and maybe they, are, they hadn't checked their pull list in that five minutes. Yeah. Um, and then also the issue with libraries like not being open over the weekends and not having a chance to pull something. So they'll come in on Monday and say like, oh, you know, Sally has a hold coming from all the way across the system and we had a copy on our shelves, mm -hmm. why didn't we get a chance to pull it? It's like, well, it's because the hold was placed at Friday on 9 p.m. and you weren't open on Saturday or Sunday. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. exactly what's happening to us. So, so you're, if, yeah, the pickup stalling would be interesting. Would you be willing to talk about that in November or do you feel like that's not enough time to have? Um, I can, I don't know if they'll, they'll go for it. So I, oh, I can okay. either report back yes. with it, it'll, it worked or they, so the way that we do our, our stuff is we have our advisory committee and they'll meet, um, next week. And then we have our full director's council that will meet, um, the week after and go with whatever the advisory committee recommends. Yeah. Um, they're usually not that close together. But we also have uh, an upgrade to 3.13 in the middle of all that as well. So uh, so maybe like March, he'll let us know. <laughs> okay. Yes. So no, I, I I might be able to to report it back in, in November because yeah. I think that if if they agree to go for it on November 1st, we'll we'll have had a chance to implement it and see how it looks like for oh, at least a week or two. Okay. Yeah, if so. not, we can push it down the line. I'm just thinking. Uh, November will probably be our last meeting for the year. Um, most groups don't meet in December. Is that correct in my assumption? I guess depending on... <laughs> Do you want to meet in December, I guess, is the other question. I this probably is... won't know until December. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we can play by ear. That's fine. Um. Because we are, we have about five minutes left for our allotted time. Um, yeah, I, I did actually look look back at stalling, and mm -hmm. and we the reason I couldn't find the settings was we no longer have it set up. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we had it was a COVID thing. It was very useful when items were being quarantined, mm -hmm. but. Um, it seemed to cause issues where, you know, when things were getting back moving again, it was preventing new items at one library from capturing holds at others, which was not constructive at the time. So yeah. we do not have stalling, but we still have okay. the longer. Okay. Awesome. Um, we can, we'll submit, uh, Susan, did you already submit a bug for the whole documentation or would you like me to? Oh, sorry, you're muted. Um, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I have okay. Watchpad open, so I'll go ahead and submit it. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Okay, I'll put it in the, the notes and then I'll follow up with Equinox about when a patron is purged, if their holds get canceled. I'm assuming they do, but. You know what they say about assumptions. <laughs> I, I tried to look it up in the in the functions in the database, but I couldn't find it. Okay. Um, and then uh, I'll just confirm with them about when hold policies are checked. I think we're I think we're correct when that it's only tested when um, when the hold is placed. So any actions taken thereafter are not checked. I think we had a problem with that recent so I took it once. So um, yeah. So that might be the source of your your issue, your mystery <laughs> gaming of the system, Dan. So all right. Um does anyone have any topics or projects that they'd like to talk about in November? 
or curious about anything in particular. Maybe we could find someone to talk about something. When I'm are you going? Now, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to ask what. Go ahead. You please. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask you when you were going live on three thirteen. Uh, Halloween. Oh, Halloween. Okay, we're going. I think the week after, on okay. the sixth. So maybe Dan and I can regale you with our upgrade adventures. That's what I was going to say too. Is I'd, I'd be curious to to see how if anyone else is on three thirteen and maybe having some time for oh no or or oh yay. Hopefully, hopefully there'll okay. be a lot of oh yays and not any oh nos. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm currently in the process of rebuilding my Git branch right now. So, <laughs> yay fun. Yay. But okay. Yeah. Hopefully, ever, yeah, Evergreen is, uh, sorry, Indiana is hopefully intended to go on 313. Um, uh, I believe it's like the third weekend of November. Oh, okay. So, a 313 discussion next month would probably be helpful for Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, and those of you who are testing it can also. Uh, share uh, fun things. All right. Well, thank you all for coming today. I appreciate it and sharing what you have on Holt's policies. It's always fun to hear what everyone else is doing and that we're not the only ones with thousands of old policies. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'll see you all in November, if not sooner. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.